How did we bring this pad up six to nine feet with select fill and save tens of thousands of dollars or maybe more? Let's find out today on Smith House. Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. My wife and I run Smith House Company. We're a develop design build firm out of Austin, Texas, and this is our Monarch Woods project. I am standing on the pad where the house will be. We're already building a barn on the same pad over there, but here is where the house is gonna be. We're about to put in foundations this month. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit before we get all of the form work done about how we got this pad put in here and how we saved a lot of money doing it. The owners wanted to have a pond, this pond that you see behind us. They wanted this pond here and we are already going to be putting up a levee and we are going to be moving dirt around to create that levee. We weren't bringing dirt in for that levee. We were gonna pull it out of where the pond is and push it up to make this dam on the back side. Go check out another video of mine if you wanna see more on that process. But while we were digging that, we were also looking at where we were wanting to put our house. And this location here gives us the best of view. We've got a pond right over here that was existing and we wanted to look at that. And we also knew that there would be a pond behind us here and we wanted to be able to see that too. The problem was, is that this was the natural draining slope for this existing pond, which was another problem because originally the water didn't drain this way through the property. The water originally drained across this pond here and across this pond here doing this. Well, when they put this pond up here, the previous owners put this pond up here, they started pushing water around in sort of a weird way to get back with this, this seasonal creek over here. And so this was actually part of a new watershed that wasn't part of the natural terrain. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to bring this land up high enough that we could stop the flow of water coming this way. And then we were gonna direct the water from this pond back down its natural course around the dam into this pond here and then back into the, the dry creek bed on the backside of that dam. So all of this water runs the way that it was supposed to, but we couldn't do that unless we brought this pad up. If we would have stayed down, it would have been tempting for that water. Water likes, you know, path of least resistance, it's gonna look over here and be like, ah, that, that land looks pretty low over there. Let's just keep going that way. And if we had a house there, then yeah, we could have brought up the house and just had the water run around the house, but eh, it would have been fine that way, but wouldn't it be better to bring it high enough up to where the water actually runs around the way that it's supposed to go. And the second reason, other than bringing it up, we wanted to have this view. I mean, this is just a tremendous view up over the pond. We're sitting up here on a pedestal and we're also able to be above this pond here. So we're not the highest point on the property, but we're higher than any of our standing water. So all the water is going to drain away, which is really good, really good practice. The problem with that is we're going to have to bring this pad where I'm standing now. Um, on the low side, we were having to come up maybe four feet or so. And then on the high side, on that side over there, we were having to come up a full nine feet to make this pad level because the hill drops back this way and then drops back this way too. So to make a flat pad, we were having to come up between four and nine feet to make this pad level. And that would have been an incredibly expensive pad if we were having to trek it all in. So. We wanted to have select fill. Select fill is just a type of a clay sand mixture that we use around here that gives really good bearing capabilities. It's not expansive. It doesn't contract when it dries out. It's just really, really stable. Um, and we mine it in clay pits around the area and we bring it to our building site. It's not that expensive, but it is. I mean, you're spending money on dirt. The real expense is you're spending money on fuel and trucks to get all of that. I mean, we have, I don't know, I haven't done the calculations, but we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards worth of dirt to make this hill where we're going to be putting the house. And that would have been cost prohibitive. So what we thought is, can we take some of this clay that we're mining out of this pond and make this pad, this hill here, and save all of those trucking costs. So the order of operations were this. Step one, we hired Gessner Engineering there out of Bryan College Station. And we said, hey, tell us what we got. So first thing they did is they brought in a sampling machine, a soil sampling machine, and they cored all the way across where we were going to have this pad. So bulldozer comes in, clears out our trees. We don't have a pad here. It's just the raw, raw dirt 
and they core all the way across. They take a bunch of cores and they take them back to their lab and they analyze the dirt and they say, okay, this is what your dirt looks like underneath there. We got really lucky here. Um, it's good dirt. The top two feet was just, you know, a bunch of loam and stuff like that. But under that, it was some really good um, uh, load bearing soil. So they said, scrape off that top two feet and then add your soil up on top of that. And then we mined with just a shovel. We started digging some of the clay that came up to the surface. We mined some of the clay and we sent that to the lab and we said, okay, what kind of soil do we have there in that pond? And they said, it looks really good. It looks like you can bear on that soil as well. So what they told us we had to do is we scraped off the top two feet and then we did lifts. So what a lift is, is it's just a layer of the select fill that we come back in with a vibrating roller and we pack it down. And then every single lift that we do, the engineers come in and they do a compaction test. So they make sure that the soil is what we said it should be and that it's compacted to the right level. So they do that um, before we even put anything on there, we scrape the first two foot off and we compact it and we test it. And then we do our first lift, mining it out of the pond. We do our first eight to 12 inch layer and we compact it and the engineer tests it. And then we do our next eight to 12 inches and we do our next one, then we do our next one. So you can imagine by the time we're over there, we're doing nine layer or nine feet. We're at, you know, somewhere between 15, maybe as many as 18 layers on that far backside that the engineer is checking every single time. That's a really, really big pad. But what it gives us is at the end of this, we know exactly what our soil is at the very, very bottom when we know that that is good load bearing soil. And then we know every single lift all the way up is done exactly right. And now when we do the slab on grade foundation, we know that the foundation is sitting on soil that's not going to expand and is not going to contract and is not going to crack and give us problems down the road. I hope this helps. I hope you learned something. Um, go check out my other video if you don't want to do all of this stuff and you're looking at a simpler way, not a cheaper way. I don't know. We can talk about that later too, but I do have a helical pile video where I skipped all this and I just put helical piles deep into the load bearing soil. That's a great way of doing it if you want to avoid this. This house is going to be so massive and complex that the helical piles and a, and a raised foundation just wouldn't be practical. So we had to do it slab on grade and this is what we're doing to prepare for that. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe. If we've earned it, go check us out over at all of our other social media places where you're wasting time. Stop wasting time. Go out and build something yourself. We'll see you next time with Smith House.